Almost three weeks ago, Donald J. Trump was indicted by a grand jury in Manhattan on dozens of counts of fraud in connection with a hush money payment scheme in which his personal lawyer, Michael Cohen, previously went to jail. Since the former president's indictment, the Manhattan District Attorney has been the subject of countless death threats and racist diatribes. Others have made ugly appeals to anti-Semitism in an effort to attack the proceedings. And this committee, this committee has used every means at its disposal to disrupt, interrupt, and interfere with the prosecution, demanding documents it has no right to obtain and no jurisdiction to demand, subpoenaing a former district attorney, deputy district attorney, and threatening to subpoena the DA, DA himself, and now holding this hearing in Manhattan in a vain attempt to intimidate or embarrass the prosecutorial authority. Now, the majority denies that this is the purpose of today's hearing. They would have you believe it is a mere coincidence that all of a sudden and out of the blue, the chairman decided that the state of New York is a wonderful place to do a hearing. Not the chairman's home state of Ohio with its high rates of murder, but New York State. And of all the cities in New York, they would pick New York City. And of all the boroughs in New York, they pick Manhattan. Apparently, Manhattan is just lovely this time of year. What a remarkable coincidence we are meant to believe. Of all the gin joints and all the towns and all the world, we just happen to walk into this one. How absurd. Of course, it is not a coincidence that we are here in Manhattan. Instead, it is the GOP leadership in Congress doing what it has done best over the last six years, and that is to act as the criminal defense counsel for Donald J. Trump. Well, let me tell you this. Donald Trump doesn't need the lawyers on this committee to be his criminal defense lawyer. He has plenty of those already. Nor is that the role of Congress. Quite the opposite. Our role should be to defend the rule of law, not tear it down. We should be defending the principle that no one is above the law, not attempting to establish a new principle that if you are politically powerful enough, you get a pass. We should be defending the independence of the grand jury and the safety of a public servant enforcing the law, not adding to the dangers to both. The Manhattan District Attorney has the burden of proving Donald Trump guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. A jury of ordinary citizens will have the responsibility of determining whether he has met that burden. That this process will be the same for a former president as it would be for his lawyer or his driver or his doorman or his neighbor is the strength of a democracy, not its weakness. The first thing Chairman Jordan said today was that this hearing is about the administration of justice, but more accurately, it is about an effort to interfere with the administration of justice. He said that here in Manhattan, the scales of justice are being weighed down by politics, and they are, but only today. And by this committee's actions in trying to intimidate the Manhattan DA for having the audacity to believe that in America, being rich, being powerful, even being president of the United States, does not entitle you to violate the law with impunity. There was a time in America when both parties used to believe in the rule of law, but sadly those days are over. One of America's two great political parties believes that political might makes right, and more than right, it means that you are beyond the reach of the law and beyond accountability. The more power, the less justice, but this is not democracy. This is the antithesis of democracy. I yield back.